Katz, he's chief strategist at BOC International. A happy new year to you and the like, considering we haven't seen you since uh, 2010 has begun. But what do you think about this deleveraging at this point? There's a lot of concern on the markets, a lot of flight to safety. But what do you think? This correction will continue for a bit? Uh, I think we probably have a, a little bit further to go. I mean, a uh, few abortive rallies we've seen in the last couple of weeks haven't really uh, had any any traction to them whatsoever. Uh, I think the most of it is, is really global asset re reallocation. So the big global funds seem to be uh, taking their emerging market, especially China positions, from massive overweight positions that they had last year uh, down. So that probably triggered uh, what we have now in the selling, and we're getting some follow through from other players now. Mm -hmm. So uh, probably I think uh, it'll be weak for, for a little bit, but uh, uh, probably not for the whole year. Yeah. yeah, okay, so when you say we have a further ways to go, how much further do we have to go? Gee, I could throw a dart and give you a number, but if I had to guess, I'd probably think about 10% or so. Uh, that would get us into that nice kind of 20% correction range for the year and 30% mm -hmm. from the peak. And, and that's a, a pretty good number to bounce off of. From technicals, people are trying to bounce off a 200-day moving average. Yeah. Went straight through, didn't even <laughs> stop, pass go and collect $200. So uh, I think we got to basically try to figure out when, but uh, it's always tricky for stuff Yeah, like that 200-day <clears throat> moving average was breached yesterday, wasn't it? Pretty scary. So people are expecting more losses. Uh, to gum. So you're saying 10% from here, um, but Goldman Sachs is saying 30% gains for the full year of 2010 for Chinese stocks. What do you think of that? Is that a little too bullish in your estimates? Well, if you're down 20-something percent and you bounce back 36, you're pretty, m m pretty much where you started from, so that's not too bullish at all. So if you mean 36 percent from, from the highs, then uh -huh. that is really bullish. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't take much to get 36 from, from current levels. That pretty much gets us to back to where we were in November. And, and by, by that definition, there's, mm -hmm. there's nothing... Uh, well, you agree with the Goldman Sachs. You, you said that there will be a comeback in stocks uh, for the year 2010 after this initial decline here, right? So mm -hmm. what sort of gains are you looking at? Yeah, no, I think, you know, for the full year in terms of uh, off the, yeah. the beginning of the year, we're still looking for some 20% kind of upside from kind of the, the beginning mm -hmm. uh, after this correction. That would probably put us in that range of whatever, 40% up from 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 the bottom <laughs> whenever we reach those levels. Um, it's really hard to say uh, in terms of, of that. But, yeah, mm -hmm. the fundamentals, valuation, everything looks reasonably well. And I don't think uh, the situation is bad as, as people are, are saying, mm -hmm. um, uh, especially overseas and stuff like that. And certainly you can make a case that things are much worse in a lot of other places in the world, which I think they still very much are. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd rather still be in, in, in China than, than, say, oh, Greek sovereign bonds at this point in time. <laughs> nice little nudge there, Anthony. Did oh, you it's take a, a shot, didn't hint. you? Okay. A... All right. Um, let's talk about your stock picks from last time. The last time you were here was in October, I think mid-October <clears throat> sometime. I think you uh, mentioned that you still like property stocks. I think one in particular, Poly mm -hmm. Investments in China. Also, Agisim, which makes a, is a noodle maker, and China Life. So let me start picking off uh, Poly Investments because that stock down 20% since that October appearance. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people are looking at this, 62 times 4 PE. You can argue with those numbers, but that's what the Bloomberg Terminal System says. Uh, some are saying it's expensive. What do you think? Well, that's a nice thing or good thing about uh, Bloomberg's is that and if the Bloomberg Terminal was always right, we analysts would be out of a job. So, I mean, we're talking about uh, kind of historical or even kind of consensus numbers, mm -hmm. and it's not really that well followed. So, uh, down 20%, yeah, I mean, uh, I would say that pretty much the whole property sector, it's actually probably done a little better than a lot of other property stocks mm -hmm. even uh, during the same period. But, the, you know, still, when you're down, you're down. Um, at these levels, I would be a big buyer of it. I think really? for the, the yeah, I mean after the correction, uh, I think we're still looking at the same acid injection story that we did before. Since that uh, kind of October November period, we haven't had any, mm -hmm. um, uh, but still very much the company has made announcements to that effect that they want to continue mm -hmm. uh, with uh, kind of uh, growing the company and acid injections from the parent. Um, and, you know, the valuations now on a fundamental basis are, are down to some 50% plus kind of discount to NAVs, which just on a standalone without any acid injection story mm -hmm. actually looks fairly attractive. So it's kind of, a, for me, I, I, nothing's ever a no-brainer, but when you can buy something that's cheap on its own and then you have kind of oomph behind it with some other story mm -hmm. um, that if it happens would be great, yeah. that's uh, as good as you can get to get. Right, okay. No, I agree with you <laughs> on that one. But what about uh, the, the concerns out there about the clamping down? on China's property market. You know, the uh, Chinese government uh, thinks there's a bubble on the mainland uh, property side, so people are trying to avoid stocks like this. What do you say to those individuals? 
Well, you know, at the end of the day, you know, Alan Greenspan thought there was a bubble in 96, and it kind of kept going for another four years after that. Everyone has their own opinion and things like that. Uh, personally, I'm not convinced that uh, there really is a big bubble uh, as an aggregate bubble in terms of assets. There is obviously overpricing in certain segments, such as, you know, luxury Hong Kong or Second Ring Road Beijing or Central kind of... Uh, uh, Shanghai, but um, the, the rest of the country, I think uh, people are going to have to start to come to grips with a difference in attitude between a bubble and overpriced hmm. uh, or and or just get used to the fact that it's going to be a lot more different that, you know, you should be spending 30 years of your income buying a house rather than three <laughs> years of your income. But I think that mentality still exists right. in China. People think that house is something you should be able to be able to take care of and buy in three or five years of savings rather than All 30 right. years. Right, it's a big, uh, well, you know, China has a big savings rate, right? That's what uh, most Asians do. Um, let me just ask you about Adjison as well. This is the noodle maker. Uh, you said to buy the stock. It's up marginally, 1% since the uh, October appearance. But uh, is this, a, this is still a play on the Chinese consumer story, right? Is it still worth buying into at this point? Uh, well, you know, up 1% is better than down 20. Yeah. <laughs> and there's, I think you're pretty hard pressed to find too many things up since kind of October, November. So mm. I'm still happy with that, uh, that position. Um, yeah, it is. I mean, there's not that many in the restaurant sector. If you could uh, uh, want to be clever, you could try to proxy through something like Yum Brands in Kentucky Fried mm. Chicken in the United States, which is about a third of their earnings in China, but so it's not a pure play. Uh, but in terms of kind of fast food restauranting uh, business in China, in fact, there's virtually nothing. Uh, you know, Cafe de Coral is great in Hong Kong, uh, but <laughs> is uh, it great? Okay, that's interesting. Uh, is, some of us are are not uh, employed by the uh, Goldman Sachs, so you know we have to eat somewhere. Um, <laughs> okay, so this is still a buy at these levels, right? You would go and buy more. Yeah, I think, you know, at these levels, it hasn't come off as much. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think it's still a buy. And, but there's also a lot of things in the consumer sector which have started to come off, uh, which are looking more attractive, you know. And that was one of the problems last year was virtually all the consumer space was trading at like 35 times per yeah. year or something.